Welcome. Today we're going to go over some four color process sets through Photoshop. First, we want to make sure that you design in RGB mode. Get all the colors you like. Enhance them, whatever. Our first move is to go into LAB mode. So I do this so I can create some white plates. I don't have to merge it. I can work right out of there. So I highlight the lightness channel and I'll duplicate it with the menu up top. So by doing that, I'm able to select the um, invert button. So I name it white, hit invert, and it actually creates a reverse positive of the white lightness channel. Uh, next, I'll go ahead and, in this case, this was a flattened file. There's nothing I can do about it, so I'm just going to highlight the background, and I'm just going to delete it, even though it doesn't look like it on this press, so you'll see in a moment. So once I do that, I want to create a t-shirt file, so just so I can judge what I'm doing with the white plate. So I do a completely black channel. Uh, put it in front of the uh, white plate and I'm gonna make it a spot color at 100% and then I'll probably just name it t-shirt. Uh, you can change this color later to view other t-shirts underneath your uh, t-shirt colors underneath your image. So here I'm going to the white plate obviously it's gonna need to be white so I created 100% white and then I knock it down to about 80% opacity you can go to 60 if you'd like whatever feels good so now I'm viewing what the white would look like if I printed it on a black t-shirt this gives me the opportunity to adjust the um, the look of the detail the opacity so I'm going to curves and I like to just grab the middle and pull it until I get the detail that I would like to have on the press I might hit my white and black points a little bit just to give me some good clarity once I have that, I can actually duplicate that channel by dragging it down and hitting the page. And I have a complete duplication of that same exact channel. This is going to be my wet white. So I'll actually grab the top area and take it 50% down and then curve out the rest to give it a nice transition. This is purely for wet white, kind of help out the colors, keep them from gaining on the press. So you. It's hard to see here, but you can see where I can actually create that. And this is going to be about a 15% uh, opacity rating. My next move is to go back into the LAB, and I'm going to go into my color settings. So I want to make sure I've got the correct color settings. In this case, this defaults to a swap, uh, standard web offset printing. So you can have the wrong colors in there if you try to separate here. This usually creates your process separation to be more dark and muddy. I have preloaded ink sets from, in this case, it's uh, Zodiac uh, from uh, Avian Specialty Inks. I load it, hit OK, and now Photoshop, Photoshop knows what colors I'm going to use when I do my separations. So once I do that, I convert back to CMYK. I don't merge again. And you can see there's a slight color shift. What I like about this is it's telling me what I'm going to get. So here's an example of the two magenta plates, one with one color data and one with another. As you can see, you can very easily get too much information in your file, which causes a very dark and muddy look. Here's an example, cyan, magenta. Now, I get down to black. Black is always takes over the press, so I'm going to knock this back about 25% on the lower areas. I'm going to allow C, M, and Y to create all my gray areas. You can type it in, too, if you'd like. You don't have to drag it. And it basically gives you a nice, cleaner look. There's before, after, before, after. So you can see it kind of cleans it up, makes it, uh, easier to pr on press to keep it clean. If I couple that with the um, the wet white, which is hard to see in this case, uh, you create a nice 
easy print on press where the white will kind of hold off the dark colors from gaining and you'll have a really nice look. In a bit I'll um, zoom in so you can see a better detail on how the white, white works. Now at this point you can output in a DCS2 file and output in Illustrator as an EPS or you could split the channels. Um, sometimes I like to just look at it in the multi-channel just to kind of double check my my separations so I can actually turn on the cyan the magenta and the yellow and then the black just to kind of check out my separations. On press you'll be printing yellow, magenta, cyan, and black. YMCK, just like the song. Almost. And then I can check out my white plate on top of that. So now we got solid channels. Um, you can zoom in and you can see how the wet white will kind of hold back the color uh, long term. If you ever had a problem having your first print look different than your last print, this is the trick right here. Have that wet white in there to kind of hold it back. Remember, this will go on a 305 mesh, so use a 55 to 65 line screen and about 22 and a half angle. Thank you for your time.